I'm Danny Flexen. This is Joe Lee. And we're here for the latest edition of Who You Backing, a draft style competition. And before we get on with this week's draft, which is a, a pretty exciting one, Joe's going to fill us in on last week's results. Yeah, for, for once, I've finally come out with the W. My stable of fighters won, and I'm looking to do it again today. You can vote now. What, what was the percentage split? Um, it was like 60-something to 30-something. So it, it, I don't know how many people voted, of course, but um, we'll, hopefully if we do it at the start, people can just vote a, a, bit, a bit easier and they won't forget to vote. This all sounds a bit dubious, but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. What do you mean? <laughs> like 60 something to 30 something. Yeah, it was, you know. it was 66 to 33, I think. I think there's been some ballot box tampering here. 66 to 30. This yeah. is live showing. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't want to see that phone again because it's your turn to answer the trivia question. Yeah. So this week we're doing best Mexican fighters of all time. Yeah. There's been a few um, lists gone out on uh, the internet in the last week or so. Um, and someone reproduced box wrecks pound for pound list, which should never be trusted anyway, <laughs> based on an algorithm. It's not yeah. like actual people sitting there picking. But mm-hmm. in honour of the subject, I'm going to ask yeah. you a very simple question. Well, mm-hmm. simple if you know the answer. Yeah. What date is Mexican Independence Day? Um, is it May the 5th? No, and I knew you would say that because of Cinco de Mayo. And I didn't know this until I checked earlier, but Cinco de Mayo is actually the anniversary of a famous Mexican military victory over the French. Yeah. Oh, no, right. Mexican, Mexican Independence Day is the other one, September the 16th. So Canelo's second when, um, out of the year. When did Fury fight? Uh, was it Otto Wallin on Me- Mexican Independence Day? Yeah, so he took it from Canelo that, that time, didn't he? Okay. Right, that's disappointing, but there we go. Not for me, because I get the first pick. Of course, yeah. And Good question, one to be fair. Stand out that the Got vast majority of people yeah. recognise as the number one Mexican fighter of all time. And it has to be Canelo. No, I'm just joking. No, no, no. It's no, not Canelo. No. We're not going it's there. Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, my all time favourite fighter. Um, really? I watched. Yeah, yeah. I got the opportunity to watch a few of his fights on TV when I was still very young. Um, yeah. I miss those days. I thought you were um, going to say you went to a fight. <laughs> I wish, yeah. I would have loved to have been at the Estadio, Estadio Azteca when he fought Greg Haugen, which was obviously an amazing yeah. thing to be at. It's funny, I, when I work for Boxing News, Daniel Herbert, who's like a veteran in the boxing game, been at Boxing News for, I don't know, 25, 30 years before yeah. he moved on. Yeah. He was um, ringside for um, Chavez Haugen. It's like the biggest crowd ever, 132,000 or whatever it is. And I said to him, oh, you know, what do you make of it? You know, it must have been amazing. Blah blah. Yeah. And he just turned around, dry like deadpan, and said, oh, "The view wasn't great." Really? <laughs> Brilliant. I, I wanted to. Oh, well, I would have wanted to go to the first fight ever at the MGM Grand when he fought. Um, was it something? Oh, and I've I literally just saw it. But yeah, he lost that fight, and then he beat him the, again the fight after. Um, it first three, ever fight at MGM. Three weight world champion, of course. Um, in the yes. days when there weren't as many world titles as well, at least at the start of his first reign. Super feather, lightweight, super lightweight, or back then it was still called light welter. That's yeah. where he really defined himself at light welter. Beat Roger Mayweather twice. Yeah. Um, just loads of good victories. Hector Camacho was another one. Obviously he beat um, Rosario down at uh, uh, super featherweight. But yes, uh, light welter was where he had his biggest success. And I think by the time that he drew with Penel Whitaker, which most people recognise Whitaker should have won, lost his unbeaten record to Frankie Randall. He was already past his prime by then. He was well past it by the time he fought the much bigger Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah. When he was in his at his peak at Super Lightweight and had that famous victory over Meldrick Taylor. That was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think he should have been stopped? Yeah, I do. I think when yeah. Taylor rose from the knockdown, he was he was all over the place. And I think yeah. referees are told they're not supposed to take into account how long's left in a round or a fight when they make that decision. So I think it's fair enough. And he, he obviously trounced him in the rematch, although that was a different Meldrick Taylor who'd been ravaged by several kind of activities outside the ring by that point. Mm-hmm. But Chavez, just in his prime, was a, a sight to behold. You know, rugged but intelligent as well. The way he set up his shots on the inside. Yeah. Amazing body puncher. Great defence. 
technically sound. Yeah. And just real pride and guts about him as well. A real warrior. Um, and yeah, no doubt, number one for me. That that would have been number one for me as well. It's hard to debate that. But I've already thought of a counter because in case of losing the first question, I had to pick a fighter that's almost on that level with a good resume. And that is Ruben Oliveras. Are you aware of him? I am aware of him. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, so he was around, like, his prime was in, like, the early 70s. He had a really nice left hook. He was compared to Joe Frazier on many occasions. And obviously, for me, it's hard to have gone back and watched all of his fights because they're not available now. But from what I've seen, the division he was in at the time as well, full of, like, ruthless opponents. He was constantly, like, fighting the top guys, had a really good resume. And, the you know, the Mexican style, that's almost looked up upon now that the endure so much damage but always walk forward that style he was one of those he was almost the flag bearer for that at the time and just before Chavez was around as well he sort of created that he was one of the bigger boxes at the time that gave Chavez almost a uh maybe a, a drive to push forward because he knew boxes from Mexico could perform on the big stage could go to America and he was one of those guys at the time the best on the planet in, in bantamweight and it's been contested well some people still think he is um and and he certainly had a good resume to prove that once he moved up from bantamweight there those weren't his best days but whilst he was i believe he was like 69 and 2 which is like phenomenal and he he left the sport with not such a great record but you've got to look at the amount of times people fought back in the 70s and 80s was a lot more than they will now that's for sure so for the 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 long career he had he still has a great record and for me to still be talking about him like 30 years after is you know it proves he's got to be up there with what some of the best Mexicans to ever fight yeah I mean it's a great pick yeah he was an excellent fighter so great resume fought often fought really good competition yeah. as well yeah um, and he, he had the real charisma as well he was a national hero at the time mm. Yeah, I mean, I think that comes into account when assessing greatness as well. It's not just what yeah. you do in the ring. And he yeah. transcended the sport as well in that era. Mm -hmm. um, my number two is going to be a rather tragic tale, unfortunately, but but an amazing fighter, Salvador Sanchez, mm -hmm. who lost his life aged just 23 in a car accident. And we'll never know just what he could have achieved. Um, but at featherweight, where he um, unseated Danny Lopez for his title, which is a great win in itself, he was just imperious. Yeah. You know, some of the people he beat, uh, Wilfredo Gomez, uh, Azuma Nelson, before Nelson truly hit his peak, probably, but still mm -hmm. a great win. Um, Pat Cowdell, who pushed him close, credit to, to Pat the Brit. Yeah. Um, but just an amazing fighter, um, technically good, fast, really powerful as well. Um just always exciting to watch, which I think is important as well. Yeah. You know, Salvador Sanchez fights were events. You wanted to tune in to watch them. And I think he won most of his defences or maybe even all of his defences. I'll have to check by KO. So <coughs> just uh, excellent dynamic puncher and, and lost all too soon. Yeah. Is, is there anyone you would have liked to see him fight like later on in his career? Is he, Cause obviously he died so early. Would you want to see him against anyone in particular that you didn't? <laughs> I think maybe Pedroza. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, if their paths ever would have crossed at the right time for both of them, I'm not sure if their peaks would have overlapped. Because the difficult thing with Sanchez, I've always thought this, is that while everyone kind of thinks, imagine how much more he could have achieved yeah. if um, he hadn't died so young, you don't know when he would have peaked. Like yeah. Someone like Wilfred Benitez, for example, peaked incredibly young. Mm -hmm. And while he's a bit of an anomaly, that could happen to anyone, especially if Mexicans turn over generally so young and pack in a lot of fights in their early years. You never know how long that peak's going to last. Um, so with Salvador Sanchez, we don't know. But if he'd have carried on to, you know, a few more years and gone in with Pedroza, Pedroza I think that would have been a great fight. Yeah, no, I, I see where you mean. It's, it's tragic what happened to him, but he, he will still go down as a great boxer for Mexico. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Who's your number two? I was I was debating this one. He's he's not rated. I think it's unfortunate because of how low weight he was. He hasn't been sort of looked upon as one of the best, maybe. But Ricardo Lopez. I'm so glad you picked Ricardo Lopez. I mean, I'm yeah. not because I probably would have picked him. But yeah, 
I'm glad because I looked at um, I think it was Mark Butcher did a piece mm-hmm. on top ten Mexicans for Boxing Social recently, and oh, okay. um, uh, Lopez was number ten. Mm-hmm. And I read it and just thought, no, nah, he should be much higher. And I, I probably he doesn't get the respect he deserves. Which sort of leads me on to the point of he was he fought at the minimum weight I think for a long time, yeah. which is you know it doesn't get the it doesn't get the recognition that a lot of fighters deserve it that way because obviously it's not as interesting maybe, but in terms of how he fought and what he did for the sport it was it was interesting because he was such a technically sound well rounded boxer that every fighter he'd come up against it was almost I feel like he beat him at his own game so like. Who, if there was a, a good inside fighter, he, he that had that ability because he was such a hard worker that he could beat anyone at their own game, and he was so well rounded. Like I say, and I think he gets under under appreciated. As I say, finished undefeated as well, def- defensively really good, and um, fifty one and zero with one draw is is something that you don't see a lot. I mean, he was an amazing puncher for for straw weight or minimum weight, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Just ridiculous. Yeah. Finito was his nickname, and it was out. El Finito. So yeah, yeah, and and he even moved up in weight and won a light flyweight belt when mm-hmm. arguably he was past his prime. So and and that's what I respect about him. He didn't call it quits too late, like with a lot of fighters. He realised he recognised. I think in his last fight, he got to about round eight and thought, "This isn't. I'm going to get knocked out sooner or later." And he, and he kept that up, and now he he's invincible and he forever will be. And it, sort of a better way to end your career, less damage and undefeated. So yeah, much respect to him. So my number three, and there's going to be a bit of recency bias, I think, in picking this because you look at someone like Carlos Zerati, who's obviously a legend, and and I mm-hmm. understand why, but I haven't seen loads of his fights, and I don't know loads about him compared yeah. to some of the more recent Mexican fighters. So, and I think it's cl- it'd be close anyway, even if I had seen both in their in their yeah, yeah, contemporary yeah. times. So I'm going to go for one Manuel Marquez. Mm-hmm. Um, only recently inducted into the Hall of Fame, or I think yes. it's actually this year, isn't it? He's going to be yeah. enshrined, but but named obviously already. And mm-hmm. just an incredible fighter, world champion at several weights. Um, sometimes gets overlooked because of the rivalry between Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales that came yeah. a little bit before he emerged onto the scene properly. Um, and he had a really slow build, Marquez, as well. I think he was mandatory for Nassim Hamid at one point, um, but kind of dwelled and. He had he's had a, he had that loss, didn't he? To um, was it Freddie Norwood? And um, then later in his career, when he was actually in really good form, he had that loss to Chris John as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which hardly anyone seen because it was out in Indonesia and the temperature mm-hmm. was ridiculous, apparently. But yeah, yeah. If you look at the plus points. You know, he beat Barrera, he beat Pacquiao once, probably arguably more. at least one of the other times. Yeah. yeah. Drew with him in their first fight, having got off the deck three times to do it. Yeah. Um, and then at lightweight, which I think was probably his best weight, although it's hard to decide because he was so good at a number of weights. At lightweight, yeah. he destroyed Juan Diaz with that uppercut in their first yeah. one. The best punches I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Beat uh, Michael Katsidis, Joel Casamayor. He was just brilliant at lightweight. And I think moving up to Welter for that fight with a comeback in Floyd Mayweather, which I was ringside yeah. for, I was lucky enough to really? watch. But I didn't wow. get to see Marquez at his best, unfortunately, because mm-hmm. it was an ill-judged move. You know, he should never have gone up against someone who was so much bigger, taller and rangier as well. And someone of Mayweather's skill set doesn't need any additional advantages. Yeah. So I think that was probably a mistake, although his bank balance or his bank manager probably disagreed. <laughs> um, but nah, just an excellent sure. fighter. And even at the end of his career, when, you know, again, he, he'd been inactive. He was probably a little bit past his prime. He was still good enough to push Tim Bradley and peak Tim Bradley all the way. And yeah. went out on a win, which very few fighters do against Mike Alvarado. Mm-hmm. Um, just an excellent fighter could do a bit of everything his combination punching was excellent he was great on the inside but had a really good jab as well really really good boxing brain um, he could outbox fighters but he liked to get involved he liked to war and the two fights with one Diaz the first with that excellent uppercut and the second which he won on points were both amazing spectacles as well yeah that's um, it's a good pick and it's sort of frustrating because you've now had two of my top four and I, I didn't want to go outside of it because my next one is going to be controversial and it's not it's not one that I totally agree with, but I certainly have reason for why he shouldn't, why he should totally be. totally agree with it. It's your own pick. Are you saying you But I wanted, so. I wanted, there was a top four that I was, I was so happy with having, but um, that, that, we will go with it. I'm going to pick Canelo, I don't care. The, it's contra- 
it's controversial, but the amount of money he's made throughout his time in the sport as well, you've got to argue. You, sorry, you can't argue against that. He's making more money than anyone. You've got to, in terms of goat status, he's he, arguably pound for pound number one at the moment. He's still ongoing, but he's he's got that Mexican way about him, the way he fights. He loves body shots. He can be involved in a scrap, as you see, against GGG. And most importantly for me, he it's not always about, like, in order to be one of the greatest, you, like you see with Cesar Chavez, you don't always have to be the best fighter because if you get stuff outside of the ring, it sort of adds to that statement. Like, with, not to switch to MMA, but just quickly, like Conor McGregor in UFC, the, the fact that he's added so much to the sport he'll be known as one of the greatest because he's transformed the sport into like a worldwide phenomenon and with Alvarez he's the man right now and he's going through the weights and certainly in a few years time we could be looking back and saying he's one of the greatest ever can you disagree yeah, I can. Yeah, but <laughs> go on. No, I see. I think he's a decent pick, and I think it, yeah. as he goes on in his career, he could establish himself even further. He's my number five. Two, but... <laughs> two, two Mexicans on the list now who've both lost clearly to Floyd Mayweather and probably no one else, which is interesting. But I don't know. I think you put him up against a, a Carlos Zarate or even a Barrera yeah, or yeah, Morales. Yeah. It's hard uh, to make the I... case because they were such excellent performers over a long period of time. But Whereas, that's not. You know, it's not, it's more, it's more, it's, that's the style. 20 years ago, your style is to last a 20 year long career. But with Canelo, he doesn't need to. He's going to make more money than they probably did in, say, less than 20 fights. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a different era. And that's sort yeah, of. Yeah, I mean, if you were saying kind of the best Mexican uh, attractions or draw cards yeah, or whatever yeah. of all time, then he'd, he'd definitely yeah. be up there. I, I just, just think, think in terms of pure in ring accomplishment, it's harder to make the argument. No, you know, I don't. A lot I, of his best wins have got asterisks against them. A lot of people mm. thought he lost to uh, Lara. Um, yeah. I didn't, but a lot of people did. Um, some thought he lost to Austin Trout. Mm -hmm. uh, the Golovkin, obviously, draw and win. Some people yeah, think yeah, it should yeah. be two defeats. So it's one of those, isn't it? It depends. I mean, the history books will show that he won all of those fights. Uh, well, one draw and won the rest mm -hmm. of them. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but um, I just add, add, add a bit of spice into the mix and stir it up. Eh? Why not? It's not an awful pick. Like it's yeah. justifiable. I just, it's, I wouldn't have picked him, but I understand it. Um, nah. Yeah. But I think having such similar picks, like that, we would have had on the first couple of rounds, just shows how important in this competition it's become to get the first pick. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna have to think of a. To be fair, you thought of a good question this week, but I'll start thinking of mine for next week already. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I wanted it to be something in line with the topic. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, of course. But yeah, so not tell people how they can vote for who's got the best stable of all-time Mexican greats. Yeah, the the who you backing symbol will come up in the top right and then just, just have your say. Click on the button, of course. Uh, it's going to come up at the start as well, just so more people can get involved, of course, and let us know what you think if you think we should have added someone else. Oh, also, I was going to say, this is he's not the greatest Mexican of all time, but would you put Andy Ruiz in your top 10 just because of being the first heavyweight champion ever from Mexico? Uh, a, I'd say he's Mexican-American rather than pure Mexican, yeah. so I'm not sure if we could squeeze him in anyway. Um, but B, no, probably not. Yeah. I mean, it's I just to... and everything, but yeah. it's like saying if Roy Jones had only, you know, won a couple of fights at middleweight and then beat uh, John Ruiz, would you put him in the top heavyweights? You know what I mean? Just some that people, one achievement. Some not people enough, would think. though, just because of how it was on the big stage, and just to win the the first person to win the the golden ticket, the heavyweight division is the best one to win. So just just out of interest, I wonder. I, I think some people will, but um, no, I certainly wouldn't. I just thought it's an interesting question. To be fair, no, no, that's good. Right, do you want to recap who your picks are so we so people remember? Yeah, of course. Yeah. My first pick was Ruben Oliveira. Second. Ricardo Lopez and third Canelo. It's controversial. We'll go with it. And then we're my, going to be voting for stables of fighters, not specifically each one. Yeah. And my picks were Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., the Lion of Culia Khan. Yeah. Um, second was Salvador Sanchez, lost all too soon. And the third was Juan Manuel Marquez. Good picks there. Happy with that. I like the. Um, 
the Mexican stables. I think there's it's such an interesting background that, that a lot of the Mexicans come from. So it's always an interesting topic to talk about, I think. Well, let's see what people out there think. Obviously, give us your comments below as yeah. well as voting. We want to know, you know, who do you find the most controversial picks? Who should we have picked in our combined six choices? Who, who did we miss out? And, and mm. how offended are you by those omissions? Let us know. And um, we'll be back with another Who You Backing next week. We haven't discussed what the topic's going to be yet, but we'll make sure it's something that gets your juices flowing. <laughs>